Hey guys, in this video, I'll be introducing you to a very important topic in physics, which is springs and spring systems. And spring systems. Springs are very common uh, physical units. You have seen them in your weighing balances and let's say your ball points. But what are they used for exactly? What is the physical aspect of springs? Let's see. Now, a spring, uh, sorry, a spring is generally shown like this when you are dealing with problems in physics. This is the upper end, which is generally fixed. Generally, not always, but usually when you will be solving your problems, this end would be fixed. Let's say someone is holding this end. And this end is not fixed, it's there it can move so what happens exactly whenever I pull this end with a force let's say to in this direction the spring stretches and let's say if this is the height this is the original position the fixed position the spring goes something like this it stretches to a final position like this now you can see that because of the applied force the spring changes its length let's say this is the original length of the spring which was let's say um, um, let's say uh, 10 centimeters and when I applied a force to this point the length the total length of the spring became 18 centimeters total the new length however this new length is not of much importance to us it is uh, although important but not as important as the term known as extension extension is again length but it is the change in length the difference between the new length and the old length which is in this case let's say the new length is 18 centimeters the old length is 10 centimeters so the extension of this spring is 18 minus 10 which is 8 centimeters the spring has extended by 8 centimeters in length when we applied a force let's say whatever the, the force was so this term is very important when you're dealing with uh, springs Remember that this is the new length and this is the extension when you subtract the new length by the old length with the old length. So that is the extension. So these are springs. This is the phenomena that happens in springs. When you apply a force, it extends to some new length. Now, the governing law, the law that governs springs, one of the very important one uh, is known as the Hooke's law. Now, what is Hooke's law? Hooke's law states that for any spring, any spring, the force applied. To it results in an extension. This extension is directly proportional, proportional to the force applied.
Now the Hooke's law, this is what the Hooke's law is telling you. Force is directly proportional to the extension, which means that if you increase the force, the extension increases. But obviously you know that you can't just keep on increasing a spring. There must be a limit to it. So we say after this, we say till the spring reaches the limit of proportionality. Now I will explain to you each and everything. But for now, the more important thing is the one in white. We'll touch the green thing in, in a bit, uh, in, in a while. So remember that this relationship is a comparative relationship. Uh, force is directly proportional to extension. If you increase the, if you increase the force by uh, two, as in if you uh, double the, extent, the force applied on a, on a spring, you double the extension. On that same spring. Let's see an example. What what do I mean by Hooke's law? Let's see here. Let's say I have two springs of the same made of the same material. I'll tell you why this is important. I have two springs of the same material, right? Let's say I apply a force of 20 newtons on this. Let's say that it has an original length of 10 centimeters, both of them. All right. And this is phase one and this is phase two after extension. I apply a force of 20 newtons and the same spring extends to a new length of let's say 18 centimeters all right what happens if I apply a force of 40 newtons what happens then to this to the same spring let's say to the same spring and remember that why I told you that you still have to ignore the green part because we are still talking about things in inside the proportionality. We haven't reached that limit that we were talking about. So let's say you are applying a force of 40 newtons. What happens then to the same spring? It has the same length and it's just, it's made of the same material. What happens then? Now, the, the Hooke's law tells us that force is directly proportional to the extension. Now, let's see. When we applied the force of 20 newtons, the extension was 18 minus 10, 8 centimeters. All right. Now we have doubled the force from 20 to 40 newtons. What happens to the extension? Since they are directly proportional, if this doubles, this doubles too. So the extension would now be 16 centimeters for the new spring which means that the new length of this spring would be 10 plus 16 26 centimeters this is how the Hooke's law comes to our advantage but you can see it is a comparative analysis I mean you have to set something before you compare it with something else. I, I mean, if I just start saying, what happens if I apply a force of 40 newtons? I don't know because I don't have, in, even in this case, I had this set that if I apply a force of 20 newtons, it goes on to extending to about 8 centimeters. What happens if there is a force of 40 newtons? Then I use the relationship that it doubled. However, if I don't have this relationship, I have just this value. I cannot, I mean, it would be useless the, the Hooke's law uh, as in directly uh, taking this would be useless I would have to know something and we will see how we will deal those problems but for now let's just talk about the simple ones 
Let's see. I have one more spring. This is my spring. And the length, the original length is, let's say, 5 centimeters. And I have two of them made of the same material. All right. Both have the length 5 centimeters. Let's say I'm applying a force of 10 newtons here. And the new length is, let's say, 15 centimeters. All right. So the extension of this spring is 15 minus 5 new length minus original length. This gives me 10 centimeters. So for a force of 10 newtons, the, uh, the extension is 10 centimeters. What happens if I apply a force of 20 newtons? Now, the Hooke's law tells me force is directly proportional to extension. Since the force is doubling, the extension doubles. So, the new extension would be 10 times 2, which is 20 centimeters, making the new length to be 20 plus 5, giving me a 25 centimeters. Now, let's say I'm applying a force of, uh, let's say, okay, you can't see this one. Mm, yeah. Let's say you're applying a force of 30 newtons. What happens then? What happens to the extension? Remember that we are keeping, we are just ignoring the fact that there might be a limit. There is a limit. Remember that. We will talk about that in the next lecture. But right now, just just for the sake of the example, we're just talking about things in the proportional limit. It is not crossing the limit. So if I apply a force of 30 newtons, what happens then? So since the force is multiplied by 3, the extension, the original extension is also multiplied by 3. So the new extension is 30 centimeters of the same string. It when a force of 30 newtons is applied, it extends to 30 centimeters. And so the new length becomes 30 plus 5 and 35 centimeters. One more thing. What happens if a force of, let's say, 5 newtons is applied? You can see the relationship. Now the force is one half of the force that was applied earlier it's one half of the it's half the force all right it's let's if, if earlier we were applying 10 newtons now we're applying 5 newtons so since it's it's strictly proportional in all the cases since the force is halved the extension also halves earlier it was extending by 10 centimeters now it will extend by 10 divided by 2 which gives us 5 centimeters. So this will extend the new extension. The extension would be 5 centimeters. And the new length would be 5 plus 5, which is 10 centimeters. So this is how you understand the proportionality introduced by Hooke's law. And we will see how we will solve some numerical problems. But this is Hooke's law. This is a very important relationship in the springs and you will see how you should understand uh, how to deal with proportionalities. So we'll uh, talk about springs, more, more about springs in the next lecture. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.